we're going to show you today how to take fiber and spin it into a yarn with a spinning wheel. My name's Kira, and yes, my hair is naturally curly, but we'll do a vlog on that at another time. <laughs> First, you need to have some fiber. Wool is best to start with if you're a newbie, um, just because it catches a lot better on itself. Under a microscope, what you would see is tiny little hooks on each fiber that catch on each other. And uh, so I would recommend wool for the first time, and I would also recommend a roving rather than trying to cart it yourself if you're new to it too because a factory will get it much smoother than you can get it yourself. So let's go ahead and we'll get started and show how it works. So we have the wheel and this is your bobbin. If you're going to get started spinning you're going to need some kind of yarn or you know something that's already been spun up on your bobbin and you're going to want to bring it through these hooks and then through the orifice. You can think of like the orifice on a whale as the blowhole that's on top. And it comes through the hole and then you have, it can you can fray any part of a yarn that you already have and you're going to want to lay your fiber on top of that so that you can start twisting it up, which is really all you're doing is putting twist. Let's get it going. Now I'm gonna pinch it here with this finger. The twist has already come all the way down between my thumb and first finger. And watch what happens when I pinch down here now and let go of this one. You watch it twist up. All you're can doing as you're spinning is controlling the twist, how far it goes, how much it goes, and so on. And you're also controlling how thick and thin by what we call drafting. When you pull it out, and get it to the thickness that you want. That's called drafting. So I'm just going to spin for a minute and show you drafting. So I've got this about what I want in thickness wise, but now I'm going to show you I can go much thinner and if it falls apart don't worry. I can show you going down extremely thin if we need to, down to almost a lace weight. And Here's what we're going to do. We're going to go till it actually is just an itty bitty little thread here. You can see, you can get it very tiny. It's a little more frustrating when you're starting out to try to do lace weight. I would not recommend that. And it's also not going to, you're, oh, here's a great example. Sometimes you're going to get a lump in there and you can just kind of come in and pull it out. If it's still not going to look too great and you're frustrated by it, like to me that's fine. Once you have finished it, no one's going to notice. But let's say it bothers you. Just break it off, let it kind of untwist a little, and pull it back out. We got some really thin. Woo. And then just lay your fiber back on top, start drafting, and then you can start spinning again. And you can see it's just going to twist right back in, no problem. And that comes with practice. And this is a double treadle spinning wheel. Some only have one pedal to push down on. I have two. I think it works better for your back. Works both sides of your back. And since I have back problems, it is definitely preferred for me. It turns the wheel, and in turn you have these two fibers up here. They're just strings. You can have, um, this is called a... Uh, I'm forgetting what kind of tension I have, but there's a scotch tension and then you have this one where it's the the two pieces that go around and they turn the bobbin and that in turn is what causes the twist to go all the way up into your hands. All right, now we'll show a thicker fiber. You can go as thick as what will fit through the orifice. When you try getting too big, it's gonna get stuck in here and then you'll run into some problems. If you do not get enough twist on your yarn, what will likely happen, let's say I leave it like this, sometimes this fiber, if it goes through, will get caught on these hooks and that will cause you, can cause you some frustration. So you might just want to take, here's how you can check to see if you're getting enough twist. Like I don't think this was enough, I'm going to give it a couple more turns. And then you can take, pull some out, drop it down, 
And if it's curling up like this, you've gotten enough twist. That's what you want to see. That's what a finished yarn would look like right there. Okay, so we'll go back. I probably can't. Let's do that. Okay. I might have the other one. So you can see here it's not twisting up anywhere near as well. It's still pretty loose. So what would happen is when you go to ply it, and we'll talk about that later, is you would have a yarn that didn't lay neatly. So when you go to crochet with it or knit with it, it's going to cause warp in whatever thing you're working on. All right. You can also over twist, which would do the same thing. And that would be like if you start getting it to where <laughs> my drive band came off. We'll do that. Okay. You can um, get to a point where you're getting too much twist in it. And what will happen a lot of times is you'll see it start twisting up here. Oh, I know what's wrong. Here's a problem solving thing. Sometimes, particularly with the Ashford wheels, is this piece is loose. And you can tighten it down underneath where there's a screw, or you can just pop that little piece right there back in and your drive band will stay on. That was a problem solving thing when I first began that was very hard for me to figure out. Now I'm starting to get over twist here. If you're wanting to go for a designer yarn, you might want the over twist, but for a regular yarn you don't. Like you can see it's just getting knotted. It's not twisting properly, it's just a knot. So you don't want that. So what I would do is I would back it up, come all the way out here with my hands, and just let the twist come all the way down. You can see it's just going to keep going all the way down. That's how much extra twist was in there. And then once I've gotten that extra twist out, it's not wanting to really twist anymore, then I can just treadle along and let it wind onto the bobbin. Just like that. All right, well, other than those basic things, just keeping in mind using the two hands and letting the fiber, letting go with the top hand, keeping pinched with the lower hand, um, I'd say you've got what you need to get started. And the biggest thing is patience. It can be very frustrating when you first start out because you're going to get really thick, really thin yarn and everybody comes in and, and when they get taught and they go, oh my goodness, my yarn looks terrible. And we always tell them, save your first one because it's designer yarn. Like people are trying to make it look lumpy and thin at the, right now, that's what's popular. And um, so don't be afraid to enjoy it, practice and just have a good time. It's good.